Hello everyone, what's up? In this YouTube members exclusive video, I'll show you how I achieved a realistic rust finish on this Star Wars Legion downed ATSD. More specifically, I will cover the process in six parts. Part 1 Undercoating, Part 2 Rust Texture, Part 3 Rust Activator, Part 4 Base Coat and Chipping, Part 5 Pin Wash, and Part 6 The Secrets of U Rust. This video is divided into chapters, so you can more easily review particular techniques if you like. But let's get started, shall we? For the undercoat, which would make up the foundation for all the rust effects, I chose a 50-50 mix of rot brown and flat black from the Real Colors line, diluted around 50% with Tamiya lacquer thinner. The reason behind this choice was to maximize durability at all costs, as I knew that I would be playing pretty rough with this model. Prior to that, I had already primed the model with AK Black Primer with Microfiller, which you could argue was kind of overkill, but as you know, I prefer to hedge my bets. Now, I've said this before, so this may be redundant for some of you, but the difference between Tamiya XF Paints, which you know I also like, and Real Colors, is that the latter is a range of real, actual lacquers, whereas my use of lacquer thinner with the former makes them lacquer-like in their spraying characteristics. So what does that mean in practice? Well, the Real Colors line will cause no dry tip at all, they will all spray beautifully as you can see, and they're very tough once dry. Anyways, enough with the dissertation. Here you can see the undercoat finished, which I was quite pleased with. I also like the tone that I achieved with this paint mix, a good balance between red and brown, I thought. This is Oxide Grime from the Ammo U Rust Pack, which I had already tried and tested back in December, with rather disappointing results. This time around, I made some changes, experimenting as I went, but I'll tell you more on those later in part 6. For now, what you can see is that I'm stippling this based on, very cautiously at first, and then with more enthusiasm. Sorry for the constant shake, guys, I couldn't help it. I should mention that I was very deliberate with both the placement of the rust paste and with the amount that I applied. I definitely didn't want to cover the entire model with it, and I also didn't want to apply a thick layer of it except in a few chosen spots. This paste is acrylic, so the working times are quite reasonable, and you can always layer it up afterwards if you like. By this stage I was starting to destroy this erstwhile round brush, but you know, a casualty of war let's say. Applying this space to the legs was quite fun, because I knew that I could go really crazy here. By the way, my rationale for this step was based on looking at a ton of reference pictures of abandoned cars. I noticed patterns of where rust would develop, so this is the step that proved the most disappointing when I tested the ammo U rust range back in December. Essentially, the Type 1 reactor, which creates red or orange rust, seemed not to work at all. Therefore, this took a leap of faith on my part, but I had some cards up my sleeve regarding possible solutions to this problem. To begin with, I made sure to coat every single area on the model generously with the activator using another round brush. By the way, I should mention that this product is quite toxic and also a powerful skin irritant, so make sure to wear both gloves and goggles or glasses when using it. Okay, so here's the first change. According to Ammo's instructions, you're good to go after 20 minutes and that's it. Instead, I waited for 40 minutes and then I applied the activator a second time. The effect was still quite limited by then, so I waited for 4 more hours and then filled a little spray bottle with the product. This was then the third and final coat of activator. 
and bingo! While that was still drying, I could finally see some cool rust develop on the head of the ATSC. Oh, but this is far from the only secret I have to impart tonight. More on this in part 6. This is a product which I almost never use. Heavy chipping effects by Ammo of MIG. Since this was an abandoned vehicle and I wasn't going to use water-based paints for the base coat, I thought, what the heck, let's give it a try. As you can see, I applied a generous coating of chipping fluid all over the model, but I also made sure that it was nice and even, without any pulling. While I let the chipping fluid dry, I started mixing my usual Imperial Grey colors. Initially I went with Sky Grey and Flat White in equal parts, and then added quite a bit of thinner, roughly 65% thinner I would say. However, the mix was too dark for my taste, so then added some more white and gave it a good mix to check the consistency. As you can see, I still eyeball my mixes to some extent. Anyways, the reason why I increased the ratio thinner is the same one why I'm spraying the grey in such a slow and deliberate manner. I wanted to make sure that it had a nice, even coat of grey without any buildup, and I also wanted to leave some spots slightly transparent. The reason for this, in turn, is that I knew that even with the heavy chipping effects, getting these paints to really chip heavily might be tricky. That's also why you only see me paint the head here and not the legs. I wanted to paint one part, then immediately work on chipping, rather than paint the entire model, potentially letting the paint dry on the legs for too long. The first real moment of truth was about to come here. As I started applying water to this first panel, I was a little apprehensive about the results. Armed with a large flat brush, I started to work the surface. As soon as the rust underneath started to be revealed, my initial apprehension gave way to excitement. Yes, everything is proceeding as I have foreseen, I thought. <laughs> In any case, progress meant using a lot of water and a lot of friction, which wasn't entirely a surprise to be honest. As I first dried the panel using some kitchen paper, I was very pleased with the results and determined to make this my best rust work to date. This top panel proved a little harder, but eventually got it where I wanted, at least for the moment. Then I remembered an old trick of mine and decided to get a second airbrush out, seeing as how the first one still had the grey mix in it. Drying the panel like this was way faster, more fun and more effective, if quite messy. And now it was time for the legs. Like I said before, I painted this separately to avoid the grey paint curing for too long and then not reacting to the chipping fluid well enough. Here I went really aggressive with both the level of friction and with the amount of water used, and the results I was getting were very nice, but insufficient for what I had in mind. Therefore, I switched brushes to the biggest, hardest one I have, no pun intended, and then I really went to town. As you can see from the amount of foam that I was generating, I wasn't kidding around. Now I will admit that this entire step was very time consuming. One hour from mixing the paints until the end, but in my opinion the results I got were really worth it. So with the chipping out of the way, it was time to increase contrast by using a more mundane method, a pin wash. For this, I decided to use truck wash, which is basically the darkest enamel rust wash that there is. I used my Badger paint mixer to make sure that the pigment wasn't all deposited at the bottom, which I find often happens with this particular enamel. I also wanted to add enough thinner to make sure that it would be subtle enough. My first mix was clearly too thick, so I added some more. Also, I hadn't applied a clear coat to the model, so the thinner mix would help with capillary action. As you can see, this pin wash worked really well. Not only was the flow quite good, 
but the effect of the darker wash against the lighter tones of the actual rust was fantastic. Initially, I had been afraid to somehow ruin the effect of the real rust. I don't know, by making the contrast seem too garish, for example. I was happy to be wrong there. The transition between the two was seamless and I was a happy camper. But speaking of being a happy camper, there were a lot of steps which I believe made a difference to getting the ammo Euros to perform like I wanted. The following are my little Euros top tips, or as I prefer to call it, the riddle of rust. So pay attention guys. My first tip is to not only shake the paint, which I had done vigorously, in fact, back in December, but to stir it. This I decided to do following some of the comments which I got in the video. I used the same Badger paint mixer, which you just saw me use with enamel a moment ago. Did that make a difference? Quite possibly. My second tip is to make sure to apply the activator more than once and to wait for longer in between applications than the 20 minutes indicated in the instructions. My third tip is not to varnish the model before applying chipping fluid. Why? Let me explain that in a second. This is the model after chipping and this is the model two hours later after letting it dry and applying two coats of Tamiya Flat Clear thinned with lacquer thinner. What conclusions do you think we can draw from this? Well, firstly, that the application of water in the chipping stages causes the rust to react far, far more than Ammo's own activator. And secondly, although I have no pictures, I can definitely tell you that there was also a reaction when applying the Tamiya Flat Clear. Now, this is a bit more surprising, as they used over 50% lacquer thinner, and Tamiya Clear is alcohol-based, with no water content according to the safety sheet. Therefore, there must be some chemical in the mix which is causing this reaction. But back to my original point. This is why I don't think you should varnish before the chipping fluid. We want to make sure that we take advantage of the rust product reacting to water. Here is another before and after comparison. Quite striking, right? There are 24 hours difference between these shots. So tip number four, Leave the model for 24 hours after all is said and done. But I didn't just wait during those 24 hours. I also took inspiration from my recent attempts at smoking beef ribs, yes, it hurt correctly, and sprayed the model with water using my airbrush at least four times during those 24 hours. And each and every time I notice a difference. So tip number five, as crazy as it may sound, spray water onto your model. And finally, to reiterate, bear in mind that Tamiya Clear somehow also activates the rust. So if, like me, this is one of your varnishes of choice, well then, now you can take advantage of it in an unexpected fashion. So that is all for now, folks. This has been a fun video for me to make, and I hope that you've also enjoyed watching it. Most importantly, I wanted to thank you all for your generous support, which really makes a difference for me. That's all for me for now, but remember, keep it up and weather it out.